God in the Natural World The subtitle for God in the Natural World is Theological Explorations and Appreciation of Dennis Edwards. Hello, I am Ted Peters, and along with Marie Turner, we have been working ever since Dennis, without announcing it to us ahead of time, surprisingly died. We miss him. And so we've been putting together this post-mortem fest shrift in his honor. Now those of you who knew Dennis knew that he thought of himself as a systematic theologian in the Roman Catholic tradition, concerned about creation and Christology, ecclesiology, and sacramentology. Dennis was concerned more about the internal coherence of these various doctrines. He was also concerned about their external connections. He was quite concerned about ecology, creation and ecology. He was quite concerned about matters of social justice, especially liberation of the oppressed. And there were times when he would make those connections with what's going on in the natural sciences. Now, this collection of essays by Roman Catholic colleagues, as well as Lutherans, Anglicans, and Russian Orthodox, in principle have no organizing principle, but <laughs> the reader will soon see that a couple of themes emerge, deep incarnation and the implications of deep incarnation for the sacrament, for ecology, and for the ongoing interaction of Dennis's thought with Trinitarian theology, with Karl Rahner, Athanasius, and other favorite scholars. Yes, that's a lot of material, isn't it? <laughs> I represent the Center for Theology and Natural Sciences and my colleague Bob Russell, who had a chance to meet Dennis when he came to Berkeley in order to connect his own Trinitarian studies with what we were doing there about divine action in the natural world. And eventually he participated with us in our Vatican series on evolution and its implications for creation. What is salient in this collection of essays, God in the Natural World, is the theme of deep incarnation and the implications of deep incarnation for ecology, anthropology, soteriology, sacramentology. Well, the school of deep incarnation theology probably begins in Copenhagen with Niels Henrik Gregerson, a Lutheran, but Gregerson is sufficiently mystical that Dennis and Niels could get attuned to one another. The key, key doctrinal component of deep incarnation Christology is that in Jesus Christ, God becomes incarnate just in, not just in a mere human being, but also in the biology and the chemistry and the physics of what it means to be a physical creature in the created world. The redemption wrought in Jesus Christ is not just to skim the human race off the veneer of creation and send it into heaven, no. 
the very depth of God's presence, even down into the minerals and the subatomic activities of electrons, that activity demonstrates the ubiquity of divine presence and the salvific power of divine presence. And a couple of the correlates are that God being present in every dimension of physicality is that God endures, experiences even, the suffering of the creatures. And then, and then another implication that this co-suffering of God with the creatures is redemptive. So, once Dennis grabbed the football, that's the American football that you can pick up, not just kick. Once he grabbed that football, he ran with it through sacramentology and ecology. The sacrament is not merely the bread and the wine and the communion, but it is all of physical reality that God not only loves, but co-suffers with and redeems, eschatologically redeems. Many authors, every one of them tied in one respect or another to Dennis's interests and perhaps tied to one another. As we appreciate not only Dennis, but Dennis's appreciation of the ubiquitous presence of a creating, redeeming, and loving God.